How's it going today guys? So today I'll be showing you my first Python tutorial for this YouTube channel. And in this specific example, I'll be showing you guys how to convert Python 2 code to be Python 3 and Python 2 compatible with a package that's called Futurize and this comes with Python 3. So if you have Python 3 installed on your Mac, you should be able to automatically use this package. But what's cool about this package is, as I mentioned, it allows the code to be ran in Python 2 and 3. So it allows, it allows that backwards compatibility. So this would be useful in a case where you have a project that's targeting this piece of code and certain portions of that project target the code in Python 2 and other portions of the project target this code in Python 3. So you don't want to completely transfer the code to Python 3. You want to use future to have this code to be runnable by Python 2 and 3 so that those targets can hit this piece of code successfully without causing any errors in the pipeline. So this is exactly where it comes into handy and it's really easy to, to use. So I'll be showing you on the left here, we have this code that's only runnable in Python 2. So I'm using an online Python 2 compiler from Piazza.io. It's, it's really easy and nice to use. And as I said, I have all this code, so every line here is essentially only runnable in Python 2. And I have the same piece of code on my local computer, so I can show you that in another file. And what's interesting, if I go and try to run this Python 2 code on my local computer, which is automatically set to Python 3, I'm going to get an error right away. So quickly, we can use the futurize package in Python to do the futurization for us and make it both ways compatible. And so what's interesting about the, the futurize package, it comes in two stages. So you have stage one and you have stage two. Stage one typically gets most of the code in, in most scenarios, but sometimes you have to run stage two to completely futurize the, the code itself. So in this example, you actually need to go to stage two to completely convert the code. And I'll be showing you guys how to do that right here. So first things first, you want to type futurize dash dash stage one and then the name of the file. So futurize. And my file is just called python2 underscore future.py on my local computer. So if I go type this in, it's actually not going to convert it for me yet. It's going to show me the change it's going to make before it actually does the stage one conversion. So if I hit enter here, you can see that it's going to modify this print statement. It's going to modify this other print statement and it's going to make a small modification to the exception. So in order to actually accept this change, you have to add the dash W flag before the code. So if I go and clear this and go back into the file, we'll see that the code has slightly changed. So it, it imported from future import print function. It's changed the, the print statement like before, changed this print statement, and it modified the exception slightly. But unfortunately, if we go to run this code again in Python 3, it's still going to give us an error because we have other aspects of the code that the Python uh, stage 1 futurization did not catch. So we're actually going to have to implement stage 2. So in order to do that, it's just as easy. So first, Let's remove the flag and see how it'll look to make sure we want that change. So we go stage two. So if we look at this code in stage two, we can see it's modifying the X range, which is only a Python 2 thing. And it's also changing the package name. So what's interesting is that this package in Python 2 is different than what it would be in Python 3. So let's go ahead and accept that change as we did before. So we just add the dash W flag. And if we step back into the code, we can see that it has incorporated more changes and thus this should be Python 3 runnable and Python 2 runnable. So first I'll show you with Python 3. So as you can see, it printed hello world, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and it printed the exception correctly. And then this is in line with what's currently on Piazza.io. So if we go and try to run it on Piazza.io, we can see it printed the same thing as in Python 3. 
Now, after seeing how that Python 2 code was able to run in Python 3, you should, after taking those steps, be able to run it in Python 2 as well. Now, I tried to run it here in my IDE, this online IDE, Piazza.io, but it wasn't letting me run because I would have to install this future package, and I didn't have the capability to do that with pip install. But if you did have Python 2 and 3 on your computer, you should be able to get that to work, and I highly recommend reading the documentation online for further guidance in this whole process. As one more note before ending this video, I want to make it clear that if you do go to step, if you do go to stage one and the code is already runnable in two and three, there's no need to go to stage two because stage two could potentially just add more complexity and add errors to your code. And as you saw here, I already had an error with this package, in fact, because I ran stage two. And if my code were already interpretable in stage one, I wouldn't have to take that second futurization step to add that layer of complexity. That being said, I think you guys got the gist of it. This is a really useful tool to have that backwards compatibility between Python 2 and 3. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and hopefully this becomes in handy for one of your uh, jobs at work, personal projects where you have to maintain a legacy system and at the same time upgrade to a newer system, in this case Python 2 and 3, have them dual existing in the same system.